Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today we're looking at Pasha. This is a card and dice game with hand management, push your luck, dice rolling, re-rolling and locking mechanics. The game can be played by 2-5 players. The game is designed by Stefan Dora, illustrated by Eduardo Berra and is published by White Goblin Games in 2013. Let me teach you how the game is played and I'll give you my final thoughts afterwards. The players set up the game as displayed here. Everyone starts out with an identical set of 9 cards, 2 discs and 5 cubes, all in the player's chosen color. The objective of the game is to get the most victory points. The game is played in clockwise order from the start player, and the game is played over 9 rounds. Each round consists of 3 phases which are A. Draw a new bonus tile B. Players, player turns. C. Score points. Let's take a look at each phase in more detail. A. Draw a new bonus tile. The players start out by revealing the topmost bonus tile and placing it above its designated column. B. Player turns. Each player takes a full turn. A full turn consists of playing a single card from your hand. Each player starts out with 9 cards which are divided randomly into 3 separate and equal decks from the setup, where you'll have a single deck in your hand until all 3 cards are played, and then you may grab your second deck until you reach the third and final deck. Each card has a value on it, ranging between negative 1 and all the way to 7. After playing a single card from their hand, the active player rolls the, all the dice. What you're trying to do is essentially get a really good roll. A good roll c consists of getting a good set of dice, kind of like poker style. Five of a kind being the best, going all the way down to a single pair. The higher the value of the set rolled, the higher the chances of you scoring a better card. You may re-roll all the dice twice, keeping a die or any dice rolled at your disposal. Although you may roll the die or dice later if you wish, it doesn't really become locked. After rolling your dice, you may adjust any die or dice by spending a cube or cubes. A single cube may raise or lower the value of a die by 1, although you can't go from 6 to 1 and vice versa. Or you may spend a single cube to have one extra reroll. After settling with your dice rolls, you may proceed by placing one of your discs on the designated spot on the game board. For example, if you roll the three of a kind with values of four on each die, you place it on that spot on the board. If another player gets the same result later, they simply place their disc on top of yours, and this will be ranked higher than your disc. C. Score Points once all players are done with their turns, a scoring takes place. Firstly, the player with the lowest ranked disc on the board gets all the negative 1 cards if available. Then the player with the highest ranked disc on the board gets the, si uh, the highest valued card. Second highest rank gets the second highest valued card and so on. And until all cards are distributed. These cards go to each player's score pile and each player places their second disc on top of this score pile to mark that it's theirs. The player who has the highest ranked disc and that's in the same column as a bonus tile gains that bonus tile or tiles from that column. The, po the bonus tiles provides one of three things, which could possibly be scoring a set am of a amount of victory points at the end of the game or getting some extra neutral, neutral colored cubes these act exactly the same like your colored cubes. Or lastly, it allows you to get rid of all the negative valued cards that you have on your score pile. Even if it was a negative valued card that you just gained. Then a new round starts with the player who had the highest ranked discs starting the new round. Take back your disc from the game board and start the new round. After the ninth round, the game ends. Then the players proceed to tally up their final score. A player's score consists of all the card values that is in their score pile, plus the value of the bonus tiles if they have any, the ones with the victory points only, and any remaining cube or cubes that they have in their supply, 
gives you one point each. The player with the most victory points at the end of the game is the winner. So that was Pasha. I really enjoyed playing this one. It was a fun filler game. It didn't take a long time to play, around 30 minutes or more or less. The theme and setting looked really cool. I love the Persian and Arabian style, although it was pretty much pasted on. The artwork looked really posh and was well done. The iconography was very clear as well. So really great job by the artist, Eduardo Vera, who also worked on the game designer's other game, Medina 2nd Edition. The components were standard, nothing really stood out to be honest. The gameplay was engaging, quick and fun. You can eliminate the luck factor by spending your cubes, although those are limited in quantity. It was really en enjoyable seeing which cards were going to get scored for the current round, and the randomness of the dice sometimes can get wild. This one is not a really serious game, just for fun and good quality time. Overall, I've really enjoyed it. It's a good filler card and dice game. I recommend it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Take care and until the next one. Peace.